You're live, Karen. All right, here we go. Just hanging out for a few minutes before we actually start. I'm here with my cameraman, Dave Krychek. Say hi, Dave. I'm really a cinematographer, Karen. <laughs> Sorry. But hi, Karen. Hi. Uh, I am Karen Gallifreys. Just hanging out here at the mural gallery, killing a few t little time. And I think Dave has a joke for us. We're going to we're, we're going to the jokes already, huh? <laughs> sure. Um, I do have a joke for you. What do you call a mixed who doesn't have a girlfriend with a regular job? I don't know, Dave. What do you call a mixed media artist that doesn't have a girlfriend with a working job? Homeless. I see that uh, Christy Lee has joined us. Hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. Um, let's see. Uh, hopefully, Christy's got a glass of wine with her. I'm hoping to have a glass of wine. I'd love to have a glass of wine. Well, I'm, I'm not only a cinematographer, I'm also a key grip and a best boy. I'm handling the lighting, the electricity, everything else, and I'm also pretty handy as a bartender. Excellent. I'll make sure he doesn't trip over that cord there. What? Nice. All right, this is just missing some wine. I can help you with that too. Wow. What are you pouring for me here, Dave? While working a camera at the same time. Yeah. What kind of wine is this, Dave? It's a, a nice Malbec from Argentina. Mm. Bonnie Ratniff has joined us. Hi, Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. Um, while we're killing time, I just want to tell you that this is at the Mural Gallery in Hobart. And my very first art opening I ever had was mural gallery at Sears Center in Stanford, which burned down a few, few years ago. But that show was the perfect sunny day. Doors were wide open. In the middle of the room, big room, was a piano playing. Uh, I did the show with Celia Clark, who was a, also a great watercolorist that lives in the area. And we had cheese and cracker and wine and the whole nine yards, and it was just the perfect day which is uh, a little different than what we're doing today. It's, it's the Catskills. How could it not be a perfect day? <laughs> exactly. Christy Lee says, cheers, Karen. Cheers. Uh, Julie Krychek says, hi, Karen. Good luck with your show. Excellent. Val Dudley is with us now. Hi, Val. Lou, Louise Little is with us. Nice. Tell them what you're doing here while we're killing time waiting for others. Oh, I'm drinking wine. While we're waiting for others, um, let's talk to you about my first show I ever had. Um, I, I do want to make mention now of how much I appreciate my brother Kevin, who, who put his sculpture, his metal sculpture, which you'll see later, in the back of his pickup truck and drove it over here for me, which I very much appreciate. And my sister, who packed up her art, she's in Virginia, and shipped it all the way up here at no small expense. So thank you to both of them. And before we get going, tell people, before we get going with the official uh, webcast, tell people a little bit about what they're going to see here. Um, what we have here is watercolors that I've done which span uh, 30 years, more or less. And I also have... We've been joined by Barb Thompson. Hi, Barb. And uh, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Nancy. Um, yeah, so there's like 30 years of my artwork here. I also have artwork from my, my brother, twin brother Kevin, and from my sister, and from my late mother, Mabel Wooden Gutluck. So this has been an idea that has been brewing in my mind for a long time, so I'm really happy to find one. 
Uh, Tom and Roberta Austin have joined. Hi, Tom and Roberta. Mama joined. Nice. She says, hi, Cupcake. <laughs> Don't know who she's talking about. Uh-huh. Those of you who uh, know Karen, I think you all know that uh, nobody knows her name is Karen. Uh-oh. Her family name is Cupcake. Mm. How cute is that? Yeah. Now the whole world knows Dave. And, and she paints, too. <laughs> but not Cupcakes. No, no Cupcakes. So, let's see. What else can I tell you about while we're waiting to start? Um, Hobart, if you're not familiar with it, is a little tiny village in the foothills of the Catskill Mountains. Um, if you are joining, please uh, take a second to like my page. For some reason, Facebook will um, put me up in the rankings if people like my page. And um, during during the show, please feel free to comment because that apparently is good for Facebook ratings too. What's our time there, Dave? Ready to fly? Five oh three. I think we're about ready to fly, Karen. Okay. We're going to start the official show now. All right. Officially, I'm going to put my glass of wine down. Andrea. And welcome you to my show. And once again, this is Karen Gutliff Graves. I'm here at the mural on Main Gallery in Hobart, New York. Uh, and with my video video. I call myself a cinematographer, Karen. Uh, <laughs> hi, Karen. Hi. Uh, we are here at Hobart, which is a little tiny village in the foothills of the Catskill Mountains. It's also known as the Book Village because it has several antiquarian bookstores. It also has some great restaurants, which hopefully will be open again someday. And you can tour the restaurants and the bookstores and hopefully come over to the Mural Gallery. Um, I want to thank Mural for inviting me to do the show here. Of course the plan was I was going to do the show with another artist and we were going to have the reception with the cheese and crackers and the whole nine yards and that um, that plan went uh, astray but... Because of the pandemic. Yeah because of the pandemic. So with Dave's Help. We decided to uh, try to do a, a Facebook live show, and Mural was on board with that, so here we are. Um, I want to um, thank them for inviting me and tell you a little bit about the show. I do have artwork here today from my twin brother Kevin, a sculpture, and paintings from my sister, Dr. Duane Gullah and paintings from uh, my late mother, Mabel Wooden Gullah. Uh, painting and sculpture. Painting and sculpture, right. And she was really my inspiration to become an artist. When I was growing up, she, um, she was an artist, and when I was about 11 or so, she started teaching through BOCES program in Treadwell and Franklin and Walton part-time, and she went back to school to take classes in order to get her four-year degree. And she took a couple of watercolor in, classes. In the midst of raising six kids. Six kids. Yeah, yeah. Did I mention that? Well, she's raising six kids. So she took some classes and she just, uh, sculpture classes and watercolor classes and just did phenomenal work. And uh, anyway, that's where my source of love for art and for Delaware County in this area. And your mother passed away at about the time that she was about to begin a new career. Right, right. Art, yeah. Well, when she was getting her degree. How old was she? 51. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is in her memory, isn't it? Yes, it is. Don't get crying. Baby. Okay. So let me talk about her watercolor. I want to start with her watercolor. This is um, the pond at Hanford Mills, uh, which is on loan from my brother Kevin. And um, you can see one of the watercolor techniques that she used is she scraped, use a razor blade, and scraped the paint back off the paper in order to get the reflections of the water. Beautiful. Getting lots of loves and likes from people who are watching. Great. Okay, and 
Now, one of my paintings, starting out with, this is called Tapping Roadside Sentinels. And this was uh, a row of maple trees that was outside of Delhi, heading towards Oneana and Route 28, several years ago. Um, I saw a whole row of trees with the old metal sap buckets on it, which you don't see very much anymore. And so I pulled over immediately and took photos to do this painting from. That's, and that's largely the way I work. If possible, uh, I do sketches in, on site and maybe a little draft of the watercolor, but for the most part, I work from photographs. And uh, how frequently do you, ch when you choose your subjects, uh, is it an act of trespassing? <laughs> never, Dave, never. And this painting, which I took the photograph from the road, I was not trespassing. This is um, almost home, the little Delaware Bovina. And when you're coming into the village of Bovina, on the right hand side, there was this big old dead tree, and it made um, the cross with the branches in the back, and it just reminded me of a, st of a stained glass window. And you can see the creamery way in the background now, which has been taken over and, and redone. But this is one of my fascinations is water, and especially the smaller the stream, the better. And you can see how the, I spent all the time doing all these little ripples all the way through the, the painting and got a little crazy with all these little rocks. Um, this is a watercolor, obviously. And uh, when you were younger, you worked in, in other media. How did you choose watercolor as your primary medium? Well, I, I actually started out in uh, high school using acrylics and then moved into oils but um, and this is one of my earliest pieces um, my sister had sent me a set of watercolors that sat for several years not being used and then when I was running rumors restaurant in Delhi Jack Beal and Sandra Freckleton came in on Friday night with their entire class very well known um Painters, yeah. both. Yeah. Nationally known. And they held classes every summer out at their place on, in Franklin. And they invited me to come out for a week and take the class, which I was absolutely thrilled to do. And that's really where I started using watercolors. And this is one of the really early ones that I did. It's called Cucumber Still Life. And you said your sister Joanne sent you a watercolor kit that yep. has yep. prompted you to... Pull it on mothballs. <laughs> yeah, right. Dusted it off for that class, and uh, I've never really been able to go back to acrylics or oils since then. Why do you Why do you like watercolor so much? Um, it does things that you you can't really do with oils and acrylics. Like, like the the paint can can move in different ways than than uh, acrylics and and oils and it's not toxic and you don't waste the paint. You could sit down for five minutes and paint or as I've done several times, you could sit down in the morning and start painting and the next thing you know, it's dark outside. <laughs> and this is another very early painting. This is called um, Bobby's Jacket. It has a denim jacket that was a hand-me-down from my next door neighbor. Um, a cane chair that I got from my Uncle Howard, and he taught me how to cane the chair, and a cyclone. Wait a minute, you caned that chair? Yep. Yep. Is there anything you can't do, Karen? <laughs> well, give me a little while to think about that. <laughs> that's beautiful. And how long ago did you paint that? Uh, that was probably 30 years ago. Mm. I'm guessing, more or less. And sure which side it's stand up. Very good. Okay, this is called Skunk Hollow Porch. And this um, beautiful Victorian house hadn't been uh, lived in for many years and it was at the end of the road called Skunk Hollow where my family and my friends go deer hunting every year. And eventually the house was sold and someone redid all the details and kept all this, all these details in the house, in the porch and redid them and 
it's just amazing to me that this huge, beautiful Victorian house was way out in the middle of nowhere. Isn't everything in the Catskills kind of out in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> oh, you and, have, you have a point there. You grew up in a town how far away from us here? Um, is it 20 miles? 15, 20 miles. Yeah. And what's the name of that town? Delancey. Delancey, uh-huh. And uh, how many people live in Delancey? Oh, at least uh, 50 or 100 <laughs> in the village. I don't know. Awesome. Now, uh, this is actually from the big village of Delhi. This is called Victorian Tourists. This um, Victorian house is owned by Pam Guy, and she had planted these hollyhocks out front, and it was just the perfect image. In fact, I wasn't the only one that stopped and took photos of it. And I just had a great time doing this. And this is one of the only paintings here that you'll see that I actually went back in and used pen and ink, like around the flowers. So this is my mixed media. This is mixed media. So yes. if you're joining us late, you missed a great joke um, about uh, the prospects of a mixed media artist making a living. Uh, and you told me once that there's a little secret to this painting that your sister-in-law suggested. Oh, yeah. My sister-in-law, Carol, suggested I put a person in the window. So uh -huh. it's not really obvious unless you're looking for it. Uh -huh. And this is, an, this is a familiar image to... Uh, those of you who might be watching, who've, uh, who are participating in Carol's new little venture, which she calls painting with, which she calls painting with, with Karen. This is the inspiration for that. Yeah, I've got these. This is kind of another little project I've been working on for a long time. These are watercolor sheets. They're done on premium watercolor paper. And then I send the image out to you so that you can paint it. Or you could use colored pencils or um, uh, whatever, you could use magic markers. But I post on YouTube videos of how to paint it with this watercolor. So if you're interested in that, so let me know. I'll show you here how you can contact Karen. Karen, maybe you can talk a little bit about pricing. It's the awkward question that everybody kind of wants to know. Okay. Um, I actually have posted a price list on Facebook, on the mural site, and on my Stonewall Watercolor site on Facebook. Um, and I have with me today little red dots, which is what everyone uses. See? Little red dots. <laughs> so if someone is interested today or in the near future, um, just let me know and I'll, then I'll put a little red dot next to your just before anyone else has a chance to get it. And uh, talk a little bit about pricing. Oh, yes, my price, price ranges from, I have original paintings, I have some small ones that you'll see later that range from $46 up to $1,200 for the large original framed pieces. And I also do Z-Clay prints, which is a very high quality printing method. It's um, done with archival inks and they're spraying with microscopic uh, droplets in order to get an incredible um, resolution in your images. And those prints start at $86 and go for up from there. And when we get to the back room, um, you have a collection of some recent pieces that are, um, that are matted but not framed. Right, right. Several for under a hundred dollars, correct? Right. So if somebody wants to um, claim those, first come, first serve uh, on your Facebook page. That's right. And you'll deliver locally. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, this painting is called the Lancy Porch, and it's actually this is a this is a Z clay print. This is an example of one of those prints. And this is a, a, pro, a house was also not lived in for many years when I took the photograph to do this painting. It um, was once owned when I was a, um, a child growing up in Delancey by a man, man named John Westcott. And he had a reputation of, he was a painter, and he had a reputation of doing paintings and he would go to a local tavern and uh, try to sell them. And when the owner wasn't interested, he'd say, well, just hang it on your wall for a while. And 
he would come back in a month or so, and by that point, the owner was enamored with the paintings, and uh, he was more than willing to barter with Mr. Westcott for his beverages and, or his dinner in order to keep the paintings. So, if all, all else fails, I might try that too. So I was going to say, have you ever bartered yeah. alcohol for one of your paintings? Not yet, yeah, but I'm willing. All right, we're, willing. we're hearing from, uh, we've got some Nebraska people here. Uh, Carol Strasdis, she says hi from Bellevue, Nebraska, Karen. Hi, Carol. George Rudder's here saying hi. Nice. Hi, George. Carol, uh, your sister-in-law, Carol Bardenhagen Gutliff, says hi, Cupcake. <laughs> Marilyn Carol. Huber says hi, and I hope to find something to buy. You go, girl, she says. Janet Erickson says hello. Nice to see you. Um, Rob Bone says hi. Hi, Rob. Waving back at you, Rob. Uh, Holy cow, Kevin Gutliff, your twin brother, is watching. Wow. Uh, and um, Kevin says you're dating yourself. Huh. Alexa Figueroa, your niece is on board. She says she's coloring that one, the Victorian turrets that we just showed. Great. And uh, Julie Krychek says great project, the Victorian turrets. It's a lot of fun. And George Rudder asks about the bathroom. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but that's typical of George, isn't it? I have no idea what that means. Either. Hi, George. Okay, so this painting is called Fall in Stoddart Hollow. And this actually is a back road in Delancey. And recently I went back to try to find the exact same tree because this painting was done at least 20 years ago. And there were several options for which was the exact same tree, but we tracked it down, didn't we, Dave? I think so. It's a very striking piece. I think this is one of your best-known uh, pieces. You've sold yeah, prints and so forth sold and a lot cards. Of prints and... Of these. In fact, this is a print. This is not the original. The original is in California with Alice Stewart Collins. So when I was trying to track down this tree, I was looking for the exact same rock still sitting on the stone wall. And I think we did find him. Um, uh, Nancy Olichnovitz, she says she loves your paintings, Karen. And uh, Lois Haight says, um, we have alcohol. <laughs> 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 Especially, she says, when your paintings are offered for barter. You <laughs> uh, better be a really good bottle of wine. Okay, this is called um, Final Resting Place, and this, uh, these Jeeps are near where I live, and they're actually facing an old family cemetery. This is one of those acts of trespassing that I was oh, asking no, no, no. about. And there's a stone wall all the way around the uh, cemetery, and there's a lot, there's huge trees growing up in the middle of it, so it felt to me like the Jeeps were like, uh, keeping watch over the cemetery. Um, by the way, uh, Michelle Gallov says that she has a copy of Stoddard Hollow. Nice. Yeah, they're the Jeeps. And uh, so that's the first dozen or so of your paintings. Now where mm -hmm. are we going, Karen? Oh, well, I have one more painting of mine to show you, and then um, I have some other things to move on. This is uh, just a small painting. This is an original. It's called Last Stand. This was a huge barn just outside of Andy's going up Cabin Hill. And it's completely gone and there's no trace that was ever a barn there. And the interesting thing is I love barns when they're falling down, but the sad thing is several of the barns I've painted don't exist anymore. Yeah, you you're kind of known for you're kind of known for uh, barns, streams, stone walls, old rusty things. Um, why do those things uh, draw your attention? Uh, those are, you know, those are the images of the Catskills, the images I grew up with and just um, we can't get enough of them. I, I never run out of ideas for paintings. Just every time I go for a ride, I've got a new idea. And I, you, you talked a little bit about this a moment ago, but uh, one more time. Do you, do you make sketches on site? Do you work from photographs? How's your, what's the process? Yeah, I do. I do both, but mainly it's it's photographs, and I, I use the photographs, and I take them into Photoshop, and I edit and delete and crop and make the decisions about how I want to proceed from there. It's a great tool. 
Um, Barb Thompson is watching. Hi, Barb. She says she loves all your work and that it's a great idea of uh, the Victorian Tourette's painting with Karen concept. And Jane Carr has joined us. Hi, Jane. And um, Alexa says that uh, she gave me a couple cows one time. She's good at everything. <laughs> now we're moving on to a couple sculptures, correct? Right. This is a sculpture that my mother did when she was taking the classes, and it's called Lot's Wife. And here's a question out there for everyone. You could just answer yes or no if you know the story of Lot's Wife. There's got to be at least a couple people out there that know that. That's the, story. the pillar of sand thing? This is a pillar biblical, of salt? Pillar of salt. Story. That's a motorcycle going by, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sound control is out of, our, out of control. Anyway, the story is that the angels came to Lot's house and stayed the night. And in the morning, they told Lot that the, the city of Sodom was going to be burnt to the ground. But he could take his family and leave, and they'd be spared. And the only criteria was they could not look back or they'd turn into a pillar of salt. Mm. Well, Lot's wife turned back. Rotate that for us, would you, Karen? Show people the... It's obviously a spiral. Very striking. It's wonderful that uh, you have that thing that your mother put her loving hands on. Um, did she do other sculptures? She did. There's Mabel. That's Mabel Warden Gutliff, everybody. She, um, when she was taking these courses, she did several incredible um, sculptures. They might be even better than her watercolors, but she did a row of three different dandelions that were about six feet tall. She had all the gingerbread that was being taken down from a neighbor's house, and she took it to the studio in Suko and built a sculpture inside. And it was so big that you couldn't remove it from the door. So I don't know how many, how long it stayed inside the studio before they just had to dismantle it and take it out. Um, she also did metal sculpture, so she worked in metal and wood and uh, you, you said tools. You said once basically give her a piece of any kind of material and she could do something with it. She, yeah. And she was a, she was a, a, a small woman like you? Pretty much exactly. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. She was a, a creative uh, um, force, though, wasn't she? She, yes. Just a great imagination and, and great technical skills. We heard from five people who knew the story of uh, Lot's wife. Right. We've also been joined by Rob Bone, representing Virginia slash Wisconsin. Welcome, Rob. Um, so... Uh, did uh, did she inspire anyone with her sculpture? Anyone else in your family? She did. Actually, my twin brother. This is him and me. Um, he went to the Adirondacks and brought back one of her metal sculptures. And I think that was his inspiration because he ended up creating several metal sculptures. And this is... This is one of my... This is my favorite. This is actually his first one. It's called Spring Chicken. And as you can see, there's springs here, and there's springs here. And some of the parts uh, were found by myself and my friend Jane in an old farm dump and brought to it. I'll do, a, I'll do a little walk around it so you can see everything. There's obviously, it's a blade up there on the head. Looks like an old plow part for the other part of the head. I guess that's why they call it spring chicken, because there's a lot of springs and those are some hay rakes, hay hay tines, but hay rake tines back there. And um, when you gathered the uh, components of this sculpture uh, for your brother, was that an act of trespassing, no. Karen? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> well, let's let's go around and look at the tail side because this is such an awesome piece. Karen was saying. It is Kevin's. Um, hey, Joanne's on board now. Hi, Joanne. Um, Kevin has uh, a collection of sculptures that he's done. Yeah. Karen? Yeah, he's got several of them. Oops. <laughs> Fire the key grip. <laughs> yeah, he has several of them. The ch hey, Kevin, the chicken's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the lights. 
Uh, Jane Carr says, I've always enjoyed seeing her stages of a painting from start to finish. Most artists don't like to show how the paintings uh, look early. And uh, you were saying that Kevin's, Kevin's done about a dozen sculptures or so, and does he sell them? Um, he's never sold one yet, so I guess somebody would have to make a really good offer to get into the carpet one of them. My, my uh, Julie Krychek says, fantastic. Kevin should quit his day job to be a starving artist. <laughs> Just like that mixed media artist joke that I was telling. <laughs> Where are we going now, Karen? Okay, now we're going into the next room. Where are you going to show us? Where I'm going to show uh, some more recent work. And, some, and a few old favorites. Starting over here with... Um, this painting, which I call um, Hunting View, and if anyone's ever gone deer hunting, you know you, you spend a lot of time staring at trees, which was kind of a joke that my brother made, and, and it's so true. So I did this, took a photograph to do this painting from, and my brothers also commented that if I was looking at the ground, I might see more deer. <laughs> Wait a minute, you hunt deer too? Yes. <laughs> and uh, is this recent? Is this is from... Yeah, this is only like a year old. Mm -hmm. And on the same um, Skunkala Road, uh, this is called Twisted, and this is a line of huge, huge old trees. And they just, the branches end up twisting right around in a circle, and it's just, it just was fascinating to me. And this is one of the pieces that's uh, not framed, it's in a... Um... It's just in a mat. It's, it's in a mat, yeah. It is an original. And then from my trips down to the Gulf Coast. So you're like you're like Van Gogh. You travel seasonally to look for Yes. Look for new inspirations. Yes, Winslow Homer. He went he went south and did a bunch of paintings, so just like them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called Oak Street, Magnolia Springs in Alabama. And it's just this great tree, street lined with these old um, magnolia trees or oak trees, and they just they they feel like they're hugging you when you walk down the street. It's a, um, a frequently photographed street. It's quite well known down there. It's about a half hour from the from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. And mm -hmm. yeah, let me get in here and show you some of the detail. Yeah, lots of likes and loves for this one, Karen. It's uh, it's quite a piece. So now you're going to show us a little collection of uh, of more recent stuff that's from the Gulf Coast. Right. Um, starting with this one, which is called Toes in the Sand, and this is just a small little watercolor. Just an experiment with getting the gist of the waves. Yes, George, uh, Julie says the live oaks uh, painting is beautiful. And yes, George, those are live oak trees on the previous painting. Little shore scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the next one is called Social Distancing. <laughs> uh, it might be a little hard to tell over the... In the video, but there's a main bird here, and there's little bitty birds oh, yeah. in the we, distance. Yes, we can see it all. And the you waves are just you, fascinating. You, Where the light shines through, they look green, but in the background, the waves will look blue, and it's it's just it's it's fun to paint them. It was uh, interesting from from my perspective when we uh, when I when Karen got down to the Gulf Coast because. She was so inspired. She was sitting and painting for many, many hours a day. What else do you have? Okay, one more painting from the Gulf Coast. And this is called um, Psycho Beach House. <laughs> and it just reminded me so much of the house in the Psycho movie that and it was all dark. No one went, no one ever stayed there. Right. Why would someone buy a beach house that looks like it's a place you'd go to get killed? 
<laughs> Maybe that's why no one ever is at that house. You all know what we're talking about. That's the psycho house right there. <laughs> you put it on top of a hill instead of next to the beach and uh, bad things are going to happen. Um, and uh, this, is, this piece is for sale as well, Karen. Yep. Um, and just a reminder, feel free to make comments and do likes. Facebook seems to like that for some reason. And this is, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Avian? Yeah. Avian B&B. Avian B&B, yeah. I just loved all the colors that were going on behind the birdhouse. You, uh, you paint a lot of moss, don't you? Hmm. Which is kind of, that's kind of a tricky thing to capture. Yeah. All right, uh, where are we going now? Now I have a few pieces that I want to show you that my sister did, um, Dr. Joanne Gutluck. Tell she, us a little bit about her. She, um, she was a great artist in high school, and she um, went to college at Hartwick and considered being a medical illustrator. And this is a drawing what, from her portfolio. What, is, what does uh, Joanne do now? Where does she live and so forth? She lives in uh, Virginia, outside of D.C. And she is an uh, OBGYN doctor. And uh, she decided to do that instead of becoming a medical illustrator. It was probably a really good decision considering the computer age has probably taken over the medical illustrator jobs. Anyways, I was saying this is a drawing that was in her portfolio. It's a, uh, a pencil drawing? Yep. Uh-huh. And describe what it is. Clearly it's a rib cage, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it's a rib cage. <laughs> and uh, you were saying earlier, I think actually before Joanne got on, that um, the, the, uh, the she's the one who bought you the uh, set of um, watercolor paints, and, mm -hmm. and you described her as being one of your inspirations. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And this is actually her, um, one of her water quotes from many years ago, before she got busy being a doctor and, and having, raising three children and yeah. three boys. And Just getting the light right, sorry everybody. Okay. Um, I also wanted, wanted to tell you about my mother always wanted to make, have a trip, take a trip to Paris. And she never got to fulfill that dream, but... My sister and her husband um, helped me fulfill that dream for her, and the three of us went to Paris uh, a few years ago. And this is this is just a photograph of the two of us painting with our watercolors outside of Paris. Man, I could sit there and uh, pretend to paint all day. Yeah. yeah. Um, Carol, my Carol Strasdis from Bellevue, Nebraska, says she loves this one. I think she was referring to the birdhouse, maybe, and. Uh, Christy says, Christy Lee says, go Joanne. <laughs> and and uh, Robbie says, duh. And George says, of course, George Rudder says, cat. He's a cat <laughs> lover. Let me show you this a little bit more detail. It's just amazing. Um, and from my completely uh, amateur um, point of view, I think one of the really cool things is how she leaves the natural um, paper color in part of it. I think that's uh, kind of one of the geniuses. What's the name of this one, Karen? It's called Mao. Mao. And there they are one last time in Paris. And uh, so tell us where we are in the, in the walk and talk now. We have how many more to go? We have five more to go, so hang in there with me. <laughs> and I've got two paintings. These are from when I lived in Olive Bridge for about a year. Uh, the end of my road. Where's Olive was... Bridge? Near Woodstock? Uh, yeah, it's outside of Kingston. Yeah. Actually, um, these are two paintings that are from a farm that an old Dutch farm that was at the end of my road, and um, it was actually the Dutch farm family called Van Aken, and they settled in the region in the early 1700s and purchased the land under a land grant from Queen Anne. And this is called Stone Ridge Farm. And it was just a really, really cold day, but the sun was out and made these great shadows across the snow. It's, uh, I hope it's, uh, the, the light is 
properly portraying the color of blue because it's uh, quite amazing the color that you how do you, how do you get that blue was that a mix of yeah everything's a mix of paints yeah and um, most of these images are on my website so you can go there and, and click on them and get a better view and that's the stonewall watercolors dot, dot com yeah. yeah we'll show you again the uh, the contact Context. information. And this is the same barn and it's called Stone Cold because um, there was lots of stone houses in that area down there and the, the cow staring back at me was just made the painting for me. He was obviously not happy. He looks like he's angry at you, Karen. Yeah. How could anybody be angry <laughs> at someone who's known as Cupcake? I don't know. Um, uh, Julie Krychek says that the Gutliff family is brimming with talent. Barb Thompson says uh, this is my favorite. I think she was referring to the Blue Sky Barn. Um, Kevin is wisecracking, your twin brother is wisecracking, saying um, Mao Zedong. Was that its full name? It could have been. <laughs> been. And Christy says love that blue. And uh, Alexis says that's my favorite. I think maybe she's talking about the, the angry cow painting. Well, she likes cats, so that makes sense. Ah, we're going to show your contact information again here and tell people again what they can do if they're interested in purchasing one of these beautiful um, things. George, by the way, George Rudder says that cow is angry because you were trespassing. <laughs> Clearly you were. And, uh, no. jo and Joanne says, yes, the cat's full name was Mao Zedong. Um, so, uh, again, uh, um, to make a purchase, yeah. you can post on Facebook, or you can send me an email, or you can give me a phone call. Right, and um, post on her personal Facebook page, Stonewall Watercolors, Karen Graves Art and the Catskills. Many people come up with brands that are simple and easy to remember. <laughs> Karen decided she wanted three or four different uh, uh, brand names. So, um, Oh, and uh, Rob has a co correction. He said that wasn't quite Paris. It was by Monet's house overlooking the Seine. That sounds much better. That's why we invited you, Rob. Much Thank you. Much better than what I said. All right, moving on. Okay, this is actually a print of a painting that is owned by Julie Krychek. It's called Catskill Stream. And... I've tried to go back and find this exact location where this little tiny stream was, but it's probably only like a foot wide, and I haven't been able to track it down again. But I just, I loved all the moss on the, on the rocks and the trees and the, the water gurgling down through underneath the branches. Um, more trespassing probably? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. now the police are going to be knocking at the door any minute. <laughs> <laughs> and this is called Winter Water, uh, Winter Water in the Catskills. It's actually, this is an original, and this was actually from Greene County. Um, it's Colgate Stream, which is right the near... The North, Northern Catskills, correct? Right. It's yeah. right near Wyndham. And the fun thing about this, fun fact about this is that I actually took a mixture of green and red together in order to get the these dark shadow colors. On the snow? Yeah. That's green and red, it looks like white. Well, the, these, the dark shadows. I see, yeah. And, hmm. and the lighting's just right, the, the, the totally white species actually almost glow in the dark. Mm. Uh, Christy says, this is my happy place right there, one of my favorites. I think she maybe is referring to either this one or the one before, so either this is Christy's happy place, where this is her head. Wouldn't you like to, Christy, wouldn't you like to be sitting in one, either one of those places with that beautiful little boy? Um, Julie Krychek says, trespassing makes the best art. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Robbie says, trespassing is a fiction, by the way. Oh. All right, thanks. And, and he's studying to be a lawyer, so oh, how could he be right. wrong? All right, and this is my last thing. It's called Fall Ravine, and this is actually on Tom Hold Road, which is a road that I go walking on right near my house and there's a really steep ravine that I had to climb down into to get photographs to do this painting from. And I've also done one facing down 
down the ravine, which is located in Virginia. And this is looking up the stream. And um, Jane Carr is asking whether this is a, uh, this is the original watercolor or is this one of those, uh, how do you say it? Zykle prints? Z-clay. No, this, Z is, clay? this is an original. And the, uh, this one is also an original, right? Yeah. So Jane, there's your answer. Neither one of those are Z-clay. They're both uh, original pieces, or original watercolors. I'll go in here one more time and show you the amazing detail that Karen is the master of moss, among other things. Thanks, Dave. So I think that about covers it. It does, and I just want to, um, once again, I want to thank Mural Gallery for uh, the invitation to come and do the show here and for them allowing me to do the virtual show here. And I want to thank my brother Kevin and my sister Joanne. And I want to do a special thanks to my cameraman, Dave. Uh, he helped in uh, numerous ways. Couldn't have done the show without him. Cinematographer and bartender. <laughs> bartender, very important job. So thank you very much for taking the time Mural. out of your day. Mural. Yeah, I said Mural. <laughs> Thanks, Dave, for reminding me to... Um, I also want to thank um, Rhonda Harold Engels for all her help and her invitation to do the show. Um, Michelle Gallup says, where's the Wolf Hollow Barn? Uh, yeah, well, there's there. Are, this is not all the paintings I've ever done. There's certainly more, and there's certainly more on my website, too. So please feel free to go check that out. And uh, a couple more thank yous from, uh, from Rob and from Michelle. And Val Dudley says, lovely, awesome paintings, fun tour. Um, Rob wants to know, where are the ones from the sailboat trip? Uh, hmm. Good question. And they're all, everybody's saying thanks. Now, everybody, enjoy your cocktail hour. We're, uh, we're about to join some friends for cocktail hours ourselves. So signing off from Hobart, New York. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.